Okay, so today we're going to look at is um, the endocrine hormones of the pancreas. So the endocrine hormones of the pancreas are all situated in the islet. Now within the islet you have three types of cells. You have alpha cells, you have beta cells, and you have delta cells. Each one of them secretes a specific hormone, such as the alpha cell secretes glucagon, the beta cell secretes insulin, and the delta cell secretes somatostatin. somatostatin. So we're going to go real quickly uh, through each one individually and uh, discuss them. So the first one that we're going to discuss is the, one of the major hormones, uh, insulin. Now, um, generally, generally speaking, uh, you could think of insulin as a hormone uh, designed when there's uh, an energy abundance. And what it will do, since you have a lot of energy, it'll prefer to use glucose for energy uh, rather than um, using fat. So it gives that preference to glucose. Um, so if it gives that preference to glucose, what does that mean? Uh, overall, what it'll do, basically, in a nutshell, the carbohydrates are going to be turned into fats and glycogen, and the, all the amino acids are going to be utilized for uh, protein synthesis. So this is overall the general flow of how everything is going to work. So um, let's look at the three major um, macromolecules and kind of list out how, how um, insulin affects each one. So the first one is going to be obviously glucose. Then we have fats. And then we have protein. So again, um, how does it affect glucose? Well again, it's going to, to in order for uh, utilization of glucose, it's going to uh, affect in the muscle and the liver uh, as well. So first of all, in the muscle, you're going to have increased uptake and it's going to be used to make glycogen for muscle storage. Then in the liver, you're going to have uptake and it's going to be used for glycogen and it's also going to be used to make fat. And, in the, and uh, one interesting thing about the brain is the brain can only use glucose. Um, however, it's independent of insulin. So this is one of the uh, organs that's independent of insulin. Now, what is it going to do for fat? Well, fat is going to, um, overall, for fat, it's just going to try to increase the amount of fat and its synthesis. Um, everything is going to be geared towards that. And how does it do that? It um, does that primarily by increasing the concentration of citrate and isocitrate. What is this going to do? This, in turn, uh, will increase the amount of, uh, this will activate a specific, a specific enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Okay, um, then uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase will then increase the amount of malonyl-CoA, and this is the first step for fat synthesis. So that's one of the way it works um, towards that. It's also going to work towards increasing uh, lipo, uh, uh, lipoprotein lipase and decreasing fat lipase. So this is going to be um, decreasing breakdown and increasing uh, up, uh, uptake into the cell. Now, what happens um, if you're in a deficiency state of insulin? Um, so interesting to happen, uh, basically before you were utilizing less fat and preferring glucose, but now you're going to prefer fat over glucose. So what is that going to do? That's going to increase your lipoprotein lipase. Uh, and so then basically you're going to have uh, increased utilization of uh, free fatty acids. Um, this e free fatty acids um, will then, uh, because you have so many free fatty acids, they will then go ahead and become phospholipids and cholesterol. And of course, this is going to lead to heart disease uh, as well. 
So these are going to be one of the major problems um, with that. Now the other thing issue issue is when you have um, excess when you have free fatty acid and no insulin, you're going to get an extra increase in ketone bodies, such as acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid. I'm just going to butyrate. Um, if there is no insulin, these cannot be utilized, and so then they then they become uh, build up in the blood. Um, now for protein, again, what we're going to try to do in proteins, we're going to try to increase synthesis and storage um, of uh, and growth, sorry, of, of protein, and it's going to um, and it's going to do that by, of course, increasing the amino acid uptake into the cells and increasing protein synthesis. Uh, so what happens in state of in insulin deficiency? Um, if, if there's a deficiency, then there will be no amino acids uptake, and so you're going to increase serum amino acids. And then this is going to lead to increased urea in the urine, because this, the, the amino acids are going to then uh, be put into the urine. And the other thing is it has an uh, effect on growth. It basically potentiates the effects of growth hormone and thyroid hormone. So it has that effect as well. Now, let's talk about um, how insulin is secreted. Uh, if this is your uh, beta cell, um, the beta cell has oops, has three different types of receptors. Uh, over here, we have the GLUT2, here we have the potassium receptors, and here we have calcium. Um, so what happens is the GLUT2 allows uh, glucose to come in as it pleases. Uh, when glucose comes in, obviously you're going to have an increase in ATP. When you have a high concentration of ATP, this is going to block the potassium. Since potassium can't get in, you lead to depolarization, which activates the calcium channel, and so you get an influx of calcium. This will allow vessels full of um, insulin to fuse with the uh, membrane, and you get a release of insulin into the blood. Now, let's, uh, let's quickly take a look at uh, what can regulate um, insulin. Obviously, uh, in kind of glucose, as we just described earlier, um, but also amino acids, specifically arginine and lysine, uh, they tend to um, do it, but only, uh, but only if there's also glucose. So it just only potentiates it, but it, it doesn't uh, activate it alone. Um, you also have some GIT hormones, uh, such as gastrin, uh, secretin, uh, cholecystokinin uh, and uh, GIP. GIP is the uh, one with that's the most potent out of all of them on insulin. Um, and basically what this is, is this is anticipatory to eating. So you, you get a little bit of insulin that just, you know, in preparation for food. Um, and we also do have other hormones uh, that can um, activate, potentiate uh, Insulin, that's going to be, uh, or actually deactivated glucagon, growth hormone, and cortisol. They all can decrease the effect of insulin on the cells. So that, that uh, pretty much covers uh, insulin. Now let's take a look at glucagon. So glucagon um, is expressed when you have low glucose. And it's going to work towards... Um, increasing that. So um, how does it do that? So let's just write glucose over here. Um, it's going to increase uh, gluconeogenesis. Um, and this is going to do this uh, by converting amino acids into glucose via um, gluconeogenesis and converting fats into glucose, basically breaking them down. So the overall idea is to get more glucose. Um, how does it work? Actually, uh, it's going to increase the cyclic AMP within a cell, uh, which is going to then increase the amount of uh, 
phosphorylase kinase, uh, which is then going to increase, activate uh, phosphorylase, which is then going to increase glycogen. Uh, then phosphorylase, and that's going to increase uh, glucose phosphates. Now, this is a great example of amplification. And this is why only a small amount of glucagon is necessary to um, have a large effect. Because each, with every step, you have more and more um, things being activated. Um, interestingly enough, at very high concentrations, uh, they tend to have some interesting effects. First of all, it can uh, uh, increase the strength of heart contraction. So the, the heart muscle. It can also increase blood flow to organs, such as the heart. Uh, it can increase bile secretion. And it has a negative effect on uh, gastric acid. Now, what can regulate it? Of course, we already talked about um, low glucose, uh, but also amino acids, but, uh, which is the same for insulin, but in this case, we're trying to make glucose, not trying to make uh, proteins. And also exercise. Because generally in exercise, you're going to have a drop in blood sugar level. Um, the other thing is going to be um, somatostatin. Um, in somatostatin, uh, what does it do? It's going to um, it's going to be increased whenever you have high glucose, amino acids, uh, fatty acids, and GIT hormones. Um, what are its effects? Uh, it's going to decrease. Uh, it's going to cause a decrease in insulin and glucagon. Uh, it can also decrease motility of the uh, duodenum, uh, the stomach, and the gallbladder. So all three of those is going to decrease the uh, motility of that. And it's also going to uh, decrease the secretion and absorption of the GIT. So you can just tell it's basically deep trying to decrease everything. So it's really easy to remember that. And it also um, can decrease growth hormone in the hypothalamus. And this is why we use our creotide, which is a somatostatin analog uh, for the treatment of gigantism or hypothalamus.